So on this question, we are just going to quickly rush through it and see because uh, that is uh, actually like a revision is still an example that we consider, but this is a comparison of everything that we have had uh, together. So if you are to consider there, we are given uh, that fig 2.5, it shows a vertical bar with a rigid collar that is at it uh, at its lower end. There is a rigid collar that we are given. So according to this, we are given the weight, 30 kilonewton, the diameter, uh, and also the length, right? So this is what we have uh, from our diagram. There we have got our diameter there, and also we are given that E is equal to what? 208 gigapascal, determine the maximum stress brought about the bar. It's just a single bar that we can see there. So definitely the maximum stress is from that area that we are given. Okay? There is nothing like minimum area because there are no two bars that you're comparing. It's just area that you're using. But they are saying when, this is the most important part, when A, the load is gradually applied. So we are back to our first class of our strain energy when you're talking about gradually applied. Remember on the gradually applied, I say that, um, okay, this is when gradually applied. When gradually applied, you're putting this slowly from one point to another. So at the end, the force will end up being equal to the weight. Maximum force is, this, is the weight. Nothing is changing. Suddenly applied two times the weight. But this one is just the weight as it is. So they want to determine the maximum stress. Remember our stress, force over what? Force over area. So from that, you're going to have the force over the area where the force is the weight. This is representing our weight. So are we having the area? We're given the diameter in meters divided by 1,000, 0,03 in meters. So meaning to say, we are going to calculate that stress, the maximum stress from the force over the area, which is the weight. Just take the weight as it is. 30 kilonewton times 10 to the exponent of 3 over the area. That is pi d squared over 4. The diameter is there, 0, 0,03 uh, squared over 4 like this. So guys, this one it was just a direct question. And with this, uh, to the mega uh, Pascal, as I said, just multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative 6. Your answer is in mega Pascal. So that was going to give us the stress of 42 comma. 441 megapascal. The answer that you get is in megapascal. Uh, so there's nothing that has changed. Then this time, the load is suddenly applied. Suddenly applied. What is the condition this time? Suddenly applied. Remember your force is going to be equal to what? Two times the weight, which is our total force. So meaning to say the stress there from the total force, which is simply 2W over the area. So this is simply representing what? 2W, two times the weight that you're given. So in that case, the stress was going to be two times. Just multiply uh, 30 times 10 to the exponent of 3, your force. Just multiply it by 2. The area is not changing as it is. Uh, pi d squared over 4 times the diameter, 0, 0,03 squared over 4. So as you can see that on this part here, there is no effect. Times 10 to the exponent of negative 6 to convert this to megapascal, having our stress. So that was going to give us something like 84,883 uh, in megapascal you have the stress. So the first part here, first two, it was just something that is ordinary. But see, they are saying the load is allowed to fall at, a, take note, a height of 100 meters onto the collar. What is it that we are talking about once this happens? We are talking of a shock load. 
That's a shock lot in this case. We're just considering this as a single bar. So the, the four, the, this weight that we are given, the load that we are given here, which is our mass. Remember I said this is the load of mass is allowed now to fall to a certain height. To a certain height onto the collar, which is the height of what? 100 millimeters divided by 1,000. Uh, that's going to be 0 0,1 in meters. Meaning to say it is going to cause an extension there. We're going to notice an extension in terms of X. We are talking of what? A condition where there is an impact, shock load. Remember your shock load, guys. Okay, so this is not applicable for now. Let's just remove this. What is it that you consider on your shock load? So let's get let's get back to our shock loads. If you've forgotten this, I'm just going to also present a formula sheet, but I talked about these formulas on each and every section. So just make sure that you go through each and every section uh, each and every part, actually, so that you do understand this. But I talked about this formula, if you still remember, for our uh, shock load. We ended up with this formula. Where X, I talked about this. Okay, let me just write the formula first. Remember, we ended up with this because that is a condition of a shock load. So it is still the same condition that you still need that, the stress, force over area. But the force, where are we going to have it? Remember our loss in what? Potential energy is equal to the gain that is going to happen in what? Strain energy. I talked about this. Strain energy. So meaning to say that, our loss, remember, because of the extension, the height is going to be affected as h plus x. So that's why we are having this as mg into h plus x is equal to what? The gain that we have, which can, uh, like the, I said, guys, there are so many formulas that you can use to calculate the stress. You can use it from half of f of x, but this, we do not have that x. So that's why we opt for this one of f squared l over what? Over 2ae like this. Remember, there's also another one that is also the stress. Also, I talked about this case, talking about uh, the formulas. We can also use that. As long as you're calculating the strain energy. Remember, there's this formula of uh, the stress squared times area L over what? Over 2E. I talked about this in our previous class. You can also use that. Because there is already the stress is already there on that formula. But let's use what we already like, what we are used to. We are used to this. Okay, let's find out. X. What is the substitute? Remember X. So it's going to be mg into H plus our X. What is equivalent X? Remember, that's FL over what? Over AE. Extension. Over our AE. So that is our extension. There we've got another force. This is equal to what? F squared L over what? 2AE. So like I said, we could have used uh, that one where the, 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 the stress was. So with time, guys, we're going to also find time to talk about that. Remember, we still have time for revision. So let's substitute. Mg is the weight mass times the gravitational acceleration. That is the weight that we are given originally here. Originally it was a weight, which was the, the one that we talked of the suddenly and that one for gradual applied. The mg, that is they already calculated that. So that's 30 kilonewton. 30 times 10 to the exponent of 3 into h, the height, it has fallen 0, 0,1. Uh, this is not the first time to work with this type of a formula. So we know that we are going to end up with F as the unknown, F is to be calculated here. So we're just going to remain with that F. But it's going to be multiplied to the length. Remember the length of the bar that we're given, the 8 meters. That is what we have. So you're going to use the 8 meters there. Uh, that's 8 over what? 
area uh, remember our area this is from the diameter of 0 0.03 uh, the pi d squared over 4 is not going to change it's pi times 0 0.03 squared over 4 uh, times e which is our e we were given we were given this here e is what 208 uh, gigapascal that's 200 and 8 times 10 to the exponent of 9. That is the gigapascal that you're given there. We have our what? First part of the loss in the potential energy equal to the gain. F squared, we do not have that. So meaning to say, we're going to have this as F squared times the length. Remember, 8 over what? That's 2 times the area. That is the repetition of this part is it is actually uh, pi times 0 0,03 squared over 4 times the E, which is this one as it is. All right, so let's just substitute here and see what we're going to have. That is our E, which is 208 times 10 to the exponent of 9. So as we had this formula before, we saw that we are going to have a quadratic equation. So it will be easier that you simplify this. Just try to simplify this part here on your calculator. Simplify this part. Then you can divide this into. Okay, so that's whatever that you have here as your answer. Divide by this. 30 times 10 to the exponent of 3. So when you say this is no longer there, you have divided it here. So you are going to remain with this bracket as it is because there will be a 1. So it's going to be 0, 0,1 plus what is inside of the bracket. Simplify this part also. And it's going to remain with F. So if you simplify that part, it was going to give us a lot of zeros there on our presentation. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. A lot of zeros there. Then you're going to have 5, 4, 4, 1, something like that. So you can choose any number that is fine to work with. So as for me, I'm just going to use a 9. So if I multiply this by 10 to the exponent of 9, it means I am converting 2 times 10 to the exponent of minus 9. Remember, you, you multiply this so that you write the opposite. So the answer that you're going to get, which is 54,412, you're going to write it as times 10 to the exponent of minus 9 instead. Then multiplying here is converting to this. So take note, but we are having what there? You are having your F. So you multiply by the opposite to convert to where you want. You multiply by the opposite of what you want. You want minus 8. So you multiply by 10 to the exponent of 8. You want minus 11. So you multiply by 10 to the exponent 11. You want minus 12, the opposite. Okay? Then this is going to give us what? Remember, we took this and divided it to 30 times 10 to the exponent of 3. Remember that. So still you're going to get another decimal, 9,069 times 10 to the exponent of minus 30. That is F squared. Quadratic equation again, as we had before. Solve your equation. In the format, remember ax squared plus bx plus c must be equal to zero. So one of the sides must be zero. So let's start with this one. 9,069 times 10 to the exponent of minus 18 f squared. Take this to this side. It'll be a negative there. Minus uh, 54,412 times 10 to the exponent of 9f. Take the 0, 0,1 this side. It becomes a negative there. Uh, that's negative 0, 0,1 is equal to 0. So we can use our quadratic formula knowing that x is equal to what? Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything over 2a. Our x is representing what? f. So this is your a, this is your b, and this is your c. So therefore, it means our f was going to be 
minus b. This is how you're going to display it on your calculator, minus your b. This is how your calculator must be like. But take note, minus and minus is a positive, so there's no need for you to even write this way, but I just want you to see how it was going to be like. Uh, the b squared, take the b as it is. Again, that's negative 54, comma, uh, 412 times 10 to the exponent of negative 9 squared, like this, minus 4ac. That's minus 4. Our a, this is 9, comma, 0. Okay, that's 0, 09, 0, 069 times 10 to the exponent of negative 18. Just substitute, guys, these values as they are here. Just make a substitution. You'll see minus 0, 0,1 as it is. So this whole part is over what? 2a. Everything that we are having is over 2a. What is our a? First term. We are given so this is two times our a which is nine comma zero six nine times ten to the exponent of negative thirty. Starting with a positive, you get your answer there. So from the positive one, we were going to obtain uh this force is three six uh three four one uh four comma zero six five four. Okay, or you get another one with the negative. Remember I said you are going to take the positive answer in that case. So from the force which you are having as a positive, now we can calculate our stress. Remember the major part is to have what? The stress. From this calculation of the force, we have this force, this, this force that we just calculated. All these, it is because we want to calculate the stress. So having the force and the area from the diameter that we are given of 0, 0,03, we can calculate our stress. So therefore, our stress, like I said, from the positive answer, you're going to calculate your stress. So therefore, our stress, force over area, our force just going to write as it is, guys. You can write whatever that you want. They're just going to take as it is. Comma 0, 6, 5, 4 over what? The area, pi d squared over 4. The diameter, that was 0, 0, 0,03 squared over 4. Like that. So just going to substitute this. And as usual, times 10 to the exponent of negative 6. Converting to the mega Pascal. That was going to give us the stress which was going to be 512,126, something like that, in what? Megapascal. So these are some of the revisions that you might have, especially exam conditions, because they want you to combine uh, a lot of information that you have learned. So they can ask a typical question like this one, where they need you to understand when the, the Lord is being gradually applied, suddenly applied. And when we talk of the shock load, remember suddenly applied, we still consider that there is no impact there. So the height is zero. But for a shock load, the height is not zero. The height is as there will be a certain height. So work in with each and every part. Understand each and every part. Gradually applied, suddenly applied. So if it is the calculation of the stress, the stress formula is not going to change. As you calculated before, force over area. But what is it there about the force? These conditions now, they affect your force. And with the diagram that you're given, remember this is just a single bar that you're given. It can be a compound bar. So let's work with also uh, with our question papers. Now we can do our revisions of question papers and see how questions are being given.